Hey all, welcome to another hands-on exercise. This is gonna be creating variables from the data tables. Um, this is a little bit more in depth. You, you know, some people aren't comfortable with creating the collections. We're gonna walk you through this. This was a request that, um, that someone had and might as well add this to it since it's gonna be dealing with architect. So I've got my um, data table already created uh, as you guys do too, if, if you've been through some of these, uh, some of these series. Uh, I've added some columns, which really you just right click, you know, you just click on the three dots on the main data table page, uh, edit fields, and you're able to add this. I added a Boolean, added two more fields here. Um, I'm separating them by the pipe. Uh, this is really what the, what we're looking at the customer wants is they want to see if, if the customer owes flag is enabled. And then based off of that, what they owe and the date of the payment or what they, you know, the payment they made, the date of the payment, either way, it doesn't matter. You can do data payment and what, they, what they've what they paid or what they owe and the date of the payment. Anyway, uh, we're going to, obviously the pipe is separating those. We'll do that in the, in the call flow as well. Uh, and that's how we'll do that. So I've got this already created. You guys will need to just press pause here, create those three rows or those three columns, um, put in some random data just so you can follow along. Next up, I've already got my call flow uh, opened in edit mode. Um, I've already uh, kind of refreshed that. So now the data table shows that there's three more columns I need to fit, you know, I need to add a variable to. So go, let's go ahead and get that taken care of. I'm gonna go ahead and just enable the variables on all of those. For customer O's, I'm just gonna put flow dot outstanding credits. For the next one, for customer O's, flow dot customer O's enabled, just to, gives me a good thing of that's the enabled piece of that. Uh, okay, come on, second that. And then the last one is flow dot payment date. So we'll go ahead and we've gotten the variable set in, right? Now we're going to go and go into the test queue here. Prior to route this call, we want to add some information. We want to we want to get some information around what we need to do. Um, and play back some information for them, basic information before getting their call to the uh, to an agent. So first, we're going to go ahead and do a decision based off of if that that flag is enabled or not. So go to logical decision. Going to switch this to expression, and we're essentially just going to put flow dot customer enabled equals true. And that's not what I wanted. Equals true. So this is gonna to look to see if that box is checked. If it is checked, this is when we're going to play that information. If it's not checked, we're gonna go ahead and just route the call in. It's gonna look at the schedule check and, and continue on and to get to an agent, right? The If it's not, if it is checked though, we wanna play some basic um, information of what they've paid or what they owe even. You could, either one you could do. So we're gonna go ahead and first do an update data. So go to data, update data. And what we're really looking for here is to create a collection. So you go ahead and check this box of create collection. We're going to go down to string collection. I'm going to go ahead and name this flow dot credit collection in here, use it as an expression. Uh, and this is what I'm. So we'll go split because we have more than one variable. So we're looking or more than one thing. So we want to go ahead and split the outstanding credits, which is the the portion that has um, the the three different things in there. And now we need to know what the separator is. So the separator is this. So now we're updating the data with that. We want to do one more thing too, because we want to update the data uh, for the payment. So we want to do, we're going to go ahead and in this one, we're going to do task.payment date collection. And this one, obviously, it's going to be another expression. This is also going to be split because obviously we're splitting those. So we need to bring those in. And that's payment date. And then we're going to also do the same thing there. So now what this is doing, it's called, it's creating a collection. Obviously, I have three, uh, three payment dates, three outstanding credits in there. As long as they're separated with that pipe, um, you can have as many as you want in there. It doesn't matter. Uh, so the next thing, we're going to actually now create a loop because now we want those three to play, right? Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do loop. We're going to create the loop. Let's go ahead and name the loop flow.payment counter. 
we're going to actually do a variable here as well and this is going to be count because we want to we want to play all of the um, all of them and then once it's done we want it to move on so i'm going to go to flow dot credit collection so it's going to play the collection of that that we got in the that we set set in the update data uh, we want to play that collection and then move on so the next thing we're going to do is get some audio to this because now we want to play it back to the the caller right um, I'm just going to put some some TTS in here. This is the following payment of so easy enough following payment of, uh, and then we are going to. I know I have this separated. I only have this separated just because uh, of the differences, so I can show you a little bit differently. So the the next thing is we're going to add a little bit more data to it. Uh, now we're going to add some expressions. So the first expression is we're going to get at because we want to get at the um, the collection, and so it's going to be just the credit collection that I created. Uh, we're also going to do float up payment counter because we want the counter to then uh, do its thing as well. So we'll keep going. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is just add some TTS because now it this is the um, this is the amount that it's going to play, uh, and then we want it to play on a certain date. So I'm going to go was posted to your account on and now as you as you know we can hit another expression here and now we're going to get at the payment data collection and do flow dot payment counter so it's going to it's going to do the counter as well uh, and then i had tested this earlier on and it was a run it was like running on so in order to kind of battle that off um, I went and had added 500 milliseconds at the end. So now when it routes back, it'll wait just a pause so that they can take in that information and then it's going to play the next amount of information. And then just to finish that off, we want to go ahead and do next loop. That way it will continue to loop around until that counter has been uh, fully exhausted. And then we're going to go ahead and route that call out. Um, you can do a variety of things. You can see the where I was testing this at to make sure it was working prior to starting this. I did last three payments here, so they can select option two to do the last two pay, you know, three payments or how many ever payments they want. Um, it doesn't actually say anything in here. Uh, it just says it as a reference where it's going to look to see if that's even enabled. If it's not, it's going to put no previous payments. But then if it is, it's going to do a variety of things and go back to previous menu. You can have you know another menu to repeat that information or whatnot. There's a lot of things that you can do with these collections. Um, hopefully that answered uh, some of your questions. Uh, if it didn't, or if you wanted to elaborate on that, do, a, do some more things, um, hit me up. Thanks for uh, taking the time and see you on the next hands-on.